Hola, ¿cómo estás? Espero que estés súper bien. This is Tamara Marie, host of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Now, before we jump into this episode, I wanted to let you know about a special opportunity that you're definitely going to want to take advantage of, especially if your goal is to become fluent in Spanish. For a limited time only, my team is opening the doors to listeners of the podcast to take advantage of a free language coaching session. Now, in this session, it's not just we're teaching you about verbs or grammar, but we're really going to do a deep dive into what are your goals for learning Spanish, assess where you are on your journey to fluency at the moment, and help you map out a 90-day plan for how you can get to fluency. So we are going to help you take your Spanish to the next level, whether you're afraid of speaking Spanish or you just get a little bit nervous when you're talking to native speakers, or maybe you've got some of the basics down, but you really know that you struggle with getting your Spanish to flow and your listening skills aren't up to par. Whatever it is, even if it is a specific grammar issue, we will help you map out how to tackle that. And normally these sessions do cost, so we are offering a few slots for free. There are limited spaces available and they'll only be open up through the end of the month. So make sure you sign up. Go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach to book your free language coaching session where we will help you map out a 90-day plan to get to Spanish fluency. Okay, let's get started with the episode. It's that time of year again. I'm sure that every other email that you've received in your inbox this week has said some variation of Black Friday and sale in the subject line. And I know you might already be tired of hearing about Black Friday sales, but you know what? We are celebrating the 100th episode of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast today. And I actually have one more gift to offer all of you for being loyal listeners to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast and helping us get to episode 100 because a lot of podcasts fizzle out. They may do a few episodes and you look at your podcast feed and they're just not around anymore. But because of your support, because you've been a listener, because of your feedback, because of you sharing this podcast with other people that are in your life that are also learning Spanish, we've been able to make it to episode 100. And as my way of saying gracias, thank you to all of you who have been listening to and supporting the podcast. I am offering this week a special discount on our flagship course, Learn Spanish with Music. This is a way to quickly tune your ear to the sounds of Spanish. So if you struggle with understanding native speakers, if you think they just talk too fast, the Learn Spanish with Music course will help you tune your ears to understand spoken Spanish, no matter how fast it's spoken. You'll also learn grammar naturally without a lot of boring textbooks and rote drills and memorization. Spanish Con Salsa offers the only course that teaches you Spanish with authentic Latin music. You'll go from beginner to intermediate level in less than six months if you follow our structured approach. And you'll be listening to music so you'll have fun the whole time and you definitely won't want to quit. So if you want to take advantage of our special 100th episode slash Black Friday discount, make sure you sign up this week only at SpanishConSalsa.com slash course. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash course to enroll in the Learn Spanish with Music course this week. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much for being a listener of the podcast. I love Spanish con salsa because episode 42 and 43 call you to make a decision that a lot of Spanish courses don't give you the option to do. You have to ask yourself, what type of Spanish should I learn? Do I plan to visit Puerto Rico, Argentina, Cuba? That is a very important question. And it blows my mind that I've never thought about that until Spanish con salsa. So not only does Spanish con salsa teach you how to speak Spanish, but they also give you information They educate you on the culture and give you a lot of background that other Spanish courses do not take the time to do. 
My name is Mary Dale. I'm from Grand Blank, Michigan. And my favorite episode was How to Roll Your R's. Thank you. Thanks for the future episode. Have danced to Yororoth for decades and never knew what it was about. Thanks again. I think the biggest lesson I've learned is that learning Spanish is possible even though I'm older and that I should not give up and that it can even be fun and more, um, yeah, have more personal connection. So that makes it more interesting. And that would be the biggest thing I've learned. Thanks for the podcast. I actually really love it. I think I'm addicted. Bye. Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Mari. Hola y bienvenidos al episodio 100. Welcome to episode 100 of the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. I am super excited about the episode today and thank you all so much for sending in your well wishes and I will play some more uh, towards the middle of the episode but I do want to get started with the topic for today. So I mentioned last week in my conversation with Ero de Jesus uh, that I was actually going to have a very special guest today but before I introduce my special guest I want to talk about the song that I'll be breaking down in this episode. Uh, and this is a song that is one of my favorite songs to dance to in the summertime. It just has a super chill feeling. It's actually a bachata that comes from Dominican Republic. And the artist is Juan Luis Guerra. And the name of the song is Bachata in Fukuoka. And the reason why um, I chose this song is because last week I spoke to Errol about her learning Spanish and Japanese. And this song is actually sort of bilingual. It's mainly in Spanish, but there are some Japanese words in here. So my guest that's going to join me a little bit later is going to help me out with some of the Japanese that's in the song because I am not really good with Japanese. It's not a language that I've actually planned to learn, although my guest today um, has been giving me some some lessons <laughs> in Japanese. So the song Bachata in Fukuoka uh, is actually, the title has Japanese in it, right? So Bachata as you may know, if you listen to this podcast or if you know anything about music from Dominican Republic, uh, bachata is a genre of music from the island. It also has a dance that goes along with it. One of my favorite dances as well. Uh, but this is a very, um, it was a very popular bachata song a few years ago. So I'm going to break down the lyrics to this song and just in the title. So Fukuoka is actually a city in Japan. So this was a place that I believe the artist actually did visit, um, which inspired this song. But it's a very beautiful song. So I'll be breaking down the lyrics to that, um, as well as, like I said, I'll be sharing some more of your messages. Uh, I want to thank you all again for supporting the show, for listening uh, each and every week, for giving your feedback. Um, it's really appreciated. And I'm just so happy and so grateful to get to episode 100 of the podcast. And I look forward to bringing you 100 more. So let's get to the lyrics of the song Bachata in Fukuoka. So in the beginning, he starts out by saying, Dile a la mañana que se acerca mi sueño. Dile a la mañana que se acerca mi sueño. So this dile, you may notice this is from the verb decir. All right, so it's saying tell the morning. Okay, so a lot of Juan Luis Guerra's songs are very poetic. So uh, I like to point out when some of the language he's using is not something you would actually say in conversation. And this is one of those examples right at the beginning. So saying, dile a la mañana, he's literally saying, tell the morning, which is not something that you would probably normally say, right? But he's saying this in more of a poetic way. Que se acerca mi sueño. Que se acerca mi sueño. So he's saying that my dream is getting closer. So this acercar, it's the verb acercar, uh, when you say, say acerca, 
he's saying it's getting closer. So his dream is is getting closer to becoming a reality. Uh, and now this use of se and se acerca is actually the passive voice. So se is used a lot of different ways in Spanish, and it can be very, very confusing for learners. Uh, but this song actually has a few examples of this passive use of se. So it's a really good uh, example of that. So se acerca, he's saying it's getting closer. So tell the morning that my dream is getting closer. Dile a la mañana que se acerca mi sueño. Then he says, Que lo que se espera con paciencia se logra. Que lo que se espera con paciencia se logra. Now, this sentence actually has two more uses of that passive voice of the word se. So it has the se espera, which is, you know, what is wished for, or what you are waiting for. Se logra is saying is achieved. Again, just like se acerca, se espera, se logra. Uh, these are things that are used in the passive voice. So let me just break down a line, then I'll give you a couple more examples of that use of se. So, que lo que, which is actually funny because the artist is Dominican, but it's not the que lo que that you're thinking of, which is like a, a greeting, very informal greeting in Dominican Republic. Uh, this actually is que, which is that, okay? Lo que, what, se espera, is waited for or, you're, or is hoped for. Con paciencia, with patience, se logra, is achieved. All right, so, que lo que se espera, so that which you wait for, or that which is hoped for, con paciencia se logra, with patience, is achieved. So, that which you, you know, basically you're patient about it, right? You're waiting for something, and he's basically saying as long as you have patience, your dreams will come true. Now, the thing to note about this, again, this passive voice with se. Se espera is like saying something is hoped for. And se logra is a way of saying is achieved. What you probably are used to hearing most commonly with this passive voice of se is those famous signs that you see in the window. It says, se habla español. And you're probably wondering, okay, I know habla español means speak Spanish, but why is it se habla español? Well, in this case, that is uh, the classic use of the passive voice. So what that actually means is Spanish is spoken, right? And because it's a sign in a window, it implies here. So it doesn't say aquí, but it could, right? So se habla español means Spanish is spoken, okay? It doesn't say hablamos español, which would be we speak Spanish. It says se habla, which is is spoken. So that's the passive voice. And it's used quite a bit in Spanish, and it usually means that you know you're not really giving emphasis to whoever is performing the action or maybe there isn't a person performing the action but you're making a general statement so that se habla español uh, is very similar to how it's used here in the song se espera that which is hoped for or waited for and se logra is achieved so that's how you would use that uh, in spanish then he goes on to say nueve horas a parís viaje sin saberlo Nueve horas a París, viajé sin saberlo. So nine hours to Paris, I travel without knowing. So this sin saberlo is without knowing it. A lot of times you'll, you will see the infinitive form in Spanish. So this saber, which is to know, it's used when in English we would actually use the ing form of the verb. So we would say without knowing it, not without to know it. And you can use that phrase as well, sin saberlo, like doing something without knowing. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the podcast so far. We're going to take a quick pause just so that we can hear more from you, our listeners. We'd ask you to share your favorite episodes and lessons learned from the podcast. And here's what you said. Hi, Tamara. My name is Shelly and I enjoy the Spanish Con Salsa podcast and learning Spanish all the time. Um, while I'm working, I often listen to this. And um, so I'm very motivated to learn Spanish, and this has helped me a lot. Thank you. Hola. The 76th episode was very romantic, and it has helped my Spanish. Uh, listening to that episode, uh, hearing the music and hearing the phrases, very helpful to me. And that was really, you know, I enjoyed that. 
I do like the ones with the music and then you break it down. Also, the episodes with the history and information about the African influence of Spanish has helped me tremendously appreciate that it is, the language is just universal. So thank you. Uh, muchas gracias. Que tenga un buen día. Hola, Tamara. Me llamo Rosie Valadez Mixtay. Soy de Houston, Texas. Y me encanta sus clases de español, especialmente cuando visita con otras personas que hice podcast como españolistas. Gracias. Hola, mi nombre es Samira y soy un miembro nuevo y estoy muy emocionado de ser miembro. Ya he aprendido mucho y estoy deseando aprender mucho más. And now back to episode 100. Y crucé por Rusia con escala en tu boca. Y crucé por Rusia con escala en tu boca. So, and I passed by Russia... And this con escala en tu boca. Now, escala usually means scale. Uh, but in this case, he's talking about traveling, right? So this is another way of saying a layover. And en tu boca. Now, you probably know boca means mouth. But again, you know, he's visiting an island here. So a lot of times you may hear like a body of water referred to as sort of a mouth. So it's more of like a port um, in this sense because he's passing by this island. Yo canté tu bachata aquí en Fukuoka. Yo canté tu bachata aquí en Fukuoka. So I sang your bachata here in Fukuoka. And again, Fukuoka is a city in Japan. Y un atardecer pintó de canvas el cielo. Y un atardecer pintó de canvas el cielo. So this atardecer is sunset. And pinto comes from the verb pintar, which is to paint. So he's really saying, you know, you know how when there's a sunset and the sky just looks really beautiful, it almost looks like someone painted it because there's all these different colors. So again, this is very poetic language here. He's saying, you know, that the sky became sort of like a painting on a canvas uh, at sunset. Caminé la playa de Momochi Mianelo. Caminé la playa de Momochi Mianelo. So caminé is from caminar. So he's saying, I walked. La playa, which I'm sure you all know is the beach. Uh, and this is the playa de Momochi. And this is, again, the name of the seaport area in Fukuoka. And then he says, mi anhelo, which is more like my longing or my desire, something that I yearn for. Y se me escapó una sonrisa del alma. Y se me escapó una sonrisa del alma. So this is another interesting use of se. So he's saying, se me escapó. So he's saying, basically, escaped from me. <laughs> but it's more, again, this is more poetic language. He's not literally saying something escaped or got away from him. But he's saying, una sonrisa, which is a smile del alma. So a smile came from his soul. So he's really saying this is a really heartfelt, deep feeling that he had. Um, and he smiled because he's just... You know, he's walking on the beach. It's very beautiful. He's looking at the sunset, and he just smiled from his from his soul. Aquí me enseñó. Ah, now, this is when I need to bring in my special guest because the next word in this line is actually Japanese. <laughs> but I'll start out with the part that I know. So, aquí me enseñó. Aquí me enseñó. That means here you showed me or you taught me. All right, so the verb enseñar can be used to, to mean to show or to teach, which is very similar. You can sometimes use them interchangeably in the translation. Um, but in this case, he's saying that this is where he learned uh, this term. Uh, and for this, I'm going to have, because I can't pronounce this correctly, and I'm going to butcher it. So my special guest today, um, and again, this is inspired by my conversation last week with Errol and talking about multilingual parenting. Well, my son Santiago has been learning Japanese because <laughs> he's become fascinated with this anime series and he wanted to learn Japanese. So he's been taking lessons and he's actually been teaching me. And he's actually a really good teacher. <laughs> he's already taught 
taught me uh, some of the numbers in Japanese. He actually painted for me、uh, for Mother's Day how to say mom、uh, in Japanese as well. So the next line is the, of this song is actually in Japanese. So I'm going to have Santiago、uh, share that with us and explain exactly what it means. Hola, Santiago, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien. ¿Puedes ayudarme con la letra? ¿Puedes ayudarme con la letra? Sí, puedo. So, what does this next line mean? It says arigato gozaimas and it means gracias or thank you. Ah, okay. So, arigato gozaimas is Japanese for gracias. Sí. Ah, see, I learned something today too. I'm pretty sure I already taught you that. <laughs> you probably did, but I don't have a great memory. Okay, and after that, he repeats again. Yo cante tu bachata aquí en Fukuoka. I sang your bachata here in Fukuoka. And then the chorus、uh, says, Pa bailar contigo, which is para bailar. So he says it sometimes a little shorter, but again, in the Caribbean, it's very common for para to be shortened to pa. So pa bailar contigo is in order to dance with you or simply to dance with you. And then he says, Se me alegra la nota. Se me alegra la nota. And this is just a way of saying, you know, this alegra. Like I can say, me alegra, which is just, you know, something is like good news, right? Like, oh, it's good to hear that, or I'm pleased to hear that. And he's saying, Se me alegra la nota. It's like saying that I'm, I'm pleased to note, right? Like this is、um, something I'm, I'm glad about, about sharing. Quiero cantar contigo. Quiero cantar contigo. So, quiero is I want. Cantar to sing contigo with you. So, I want to sing with you. Una bachata en Fukuoka. So, a bachata en Fukuoka. En el mar, las gaviotas. En el mar, las gaviotas. And gaviotas are seagulls. So, he's saying. Um, in el mar, which is like the sea. So he's saying seagulls. So again, he's walking on the beach. Con tu piel de abrigo. So this is again、uh, another very poetic phrase. You wouldn't probably say this, but piel literally means skin. And abrigo is kind of like a coat or a sweater. So he's saying, like, con tu piel de abrigo is kind of like he has a warm feeling there. But、um, again, this isn't like a, a phrase you would use literally in conversation. Then he says, Vivir bachata en Fukuoka. So to live bachata en Fukuoka. Y llegó la hora de partir y decir. And Santiago is going to help me out with this one again. Sayonara. Which means adios. And goodbye in English. Gracias. And then he says, Y una palomita se puso en mi ventana. Y una palomita se puso en mi ventana. So, a palomita is another type of bird. So, he's saying that this bird sort of landed on his window. And then the bird speaks to him in Japanese. So, I'm going to have Santiago help me out again. So, what does the bird say? It says, Konnichiwa, ohai yo gozaimas. Which means, well, Konnichiwa means hello or hola. In Spanish. And Ohayo Gozaimas means good morning in Japanese. O means good morning in English. And in Spanish, buenos dias. So all together it says, in English it says, hello, good morning. In Japanese it says, konnichiwa, Ohayo Gozaimas. And in Espanol, hola, buenos dias. So he has a little palomita or bird that's visiting him at his window saying, Konnichiwa, ohayo gozaimas, or hola, buenos dias. Or hello, good morning. Muchas gracias, Santiago. De nada. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. And I want to thank all of the listeners who left us a voice note that were included in this episode. So that's Shatavia, Mary, Richard, Christina, Ella, Shelly, Ian, Rosie, and Samira. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you. And don't forget, if you want to take advantage of our 100th episode special and our Black Friday deal, you will be able to get. 
33% off our Learn Spanish with Music course just by going to SpanishConSalsa.com slash course. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash course. And that deal is only available for this week. So make sure you take advantage of it. We have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're on the fence and you're thinking it might not work for you, give it a try. See if learning Spanish with music is right for you. And if you love this podcast, I'm pretty sure that you'll enjoy the course. So SpanishConSalsa.com slash course to get your 33% off discount this week only. We're going to end out this episode the way we started with more messages from you, our listeners. So this message that we're going to end the podcast with is from our listener, Ariel. Hola, Tamara. Espero que estás bien. Estoy muy excitado a hablar contigo. Yo comencé a escuchar tu podcast en mayo de este año loco. Mi español antes de este tiempo estaba ok, más o menos. Pero después, escuchando y practicando a poco durante mi tiempo de libertad, me encontré yo hablando español más y más en mi mente y después con mi voz. Mi favorita cosa de tu parque es, es tu ánimo y entendimiento cuando personas hacen errores en gramática y en estructura de las sentencias. Por ejemplo, en la fin de cada podcast, dices que I hope that something you learned today has taken you one step closer from Spanish beginner to bilingual. Entonces, aunque estoy todavía un participante en español, ahora yo tengo menos miedo cuando hablo en español. Ahora tengo más confidencia en mí mismo. A mí me gusta la podcast Learn Spanish con Salsa. Gracias por todo, Tamara. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com.